Hi guys, so I'm back with a new video and I think this is one of the most requested video from your end. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I have attended 10 Power BI interviews and I have noticed a pattern. So certain questions keep coming up again and again. So in this video, I'll share the most frequently asked Power BI questions and the best way to answer them. And also along with each I have also identified some patterns. So in each pattern, there are a set of questions which keep coming. So those questions also I have noted. Okay. So this will be, uh, video will be very useful for you. Stay till the end because I'll share bonus tips as well. That will help you to stand out. Okay. So this is the first pattern, performance optimization. So this is a uh, question will be like this. Your Power BI report is taking too long to load. So how you are going to optimize it? So for this, you can say you have to reduce the query dependencies. Meaning you have to transform all the uh, transformations, whatever you're doing, you have to do it at the source side itself instead of doing in the Power BI. And then you have to optimize the DAX usage. And also you have to reduce the number of visuals which you are using. Okay, use only whatever is very much needed. And then aggregations, uh, that uh, aggregations you can do beforehand while in the source itself. And also you have to avoid direct query uh, whenever possible because that will increase the performance that will uh, reduce the performance okay so and then uh, you can also disable auto date or time so instead of uh, when you do that it will prevent the unnecessary date tables okay so this is how you can answer it and there are other ways of asking this question or uh, you can say under this performance optimization some questions are there which are repeatedly getting asked so that also i have noted Okay, so how can you reduce the memory usage of a Power BI report? So for this, you can say, uh, you can remove the unnecessary columns. You can use the star schema and also optimize the cardinality. Okay, just elaborate and tell. And then what are best practices for optimizing direct query? So what is the best practice? Use the indexed views, avoid complex joins, and also limit the visuals which you are using. Okay, and then why might a report be slow in Power BI service, but fast in desktop? So why it is happening service may have limited memory refresh delay or inefficient queries okay so if the service have limited memory then that might be the reason why it is slow in power by service okay and then okay these que similar question slides now i am explaining you br very uh, briefly okay so just research more on it because the main question i will explain completely and that uh, similar questions i'm giving you idea so that you can go and research more on that okay how do you handle performance issues without with large data sets so what you can do is you you can do partition the data and you can use the aggregations and also at the source and filter the data again this is another way what steps do you take before publishing a report to ensure performance isn't impacted so whatever uh, you can do before publishing so you can test in power bi service enable the performance analyzer that is the option and then just optimize the queries as well, okay? So like this, you can answer, okay? Just uh, take a snapshot and research on these five questions, okay? And then uh, this is the second pattern, DAX logic and filter context. So this is a repeated question, I can say, what is the difference between all and remove filters? So it's a bit confusing, but see, all will remove filters, but it will keep row, row context inside the calculate. But what remove filters will do, it will ensure a full reset of filters. Okay. So what, what all will do is it will remove filters. But inside the calculate function, it will keep the row context. But remove filters that will completely remove everything. There will It will not keep any context. Okay. And then this kind of questions, difference questions. What is the difference between all selected and all? Okay. Uh, so all selected that will uh, that will apply filter only when the user selects some filter. Okay. Uh, what all will do, it will completely ignore all the filters. How does context transition work in Calculate? So it will convert row context into filter context. Okay. And what happens if you use all inside some function? So all will remove filters affecting row by row calculations inside the sumx. And why does remove filters sometimes not work as expected? So that will depend on filter propagation and also the relationship between the tables. Okay. That might be the reason why it is not working sometimes. Okay. Then how can you apply row level security without affecting performance? So uh, you have to use static row level security instead of the complex DAX. That is what you can do. Okay. So for these questions as well, take a snapshot and research more on it. Okay. So that you can format your answers. And for pattern three, it is related to data model and relationships. So what happens when you join two tables with a many to many relationship? So for this, it will simply, you can say it will cause 
ambiguity issues because uh, results might be incorrect sometimes. And then what you can do is you can use rich tables or unique keys to solve this issue. Okay. And then these are the similar questions. Why should you avoid bidirectional filtering? So in this, you can say because uh, when you use bidirectional filtering, what happens is it will create circular dependencies. And also this will further lead to performance issues. Okay. Then when to use bridge table versus composite models. So bridge tables you can use for many to many relationships. Composite models you can use for mixed data sources. Okay. And then how does cross filter direction impact on tags? So uh, what cross filter direction will do is it will fill, it will control how filters propagate between tables. So how data will flow from tab uh, one table to another, the direction that will be controlled using a cross filter. Okay, what happens if a one to many becomes many to many? So, so if you are making some one to many relationship to many to many, then there will be ambiguity, the, the relationships might break and then you might need to use bridge table to solve the issue. Okay. Then disadvantage of calculated columns for relationships. So they increase file size uh, if you use calculated columns and also they do not dynamically update like measures. Okay. So that's the thing. Uh, next, this is the fourth pattern, debugging and troubleshooting. So your report works fine with sample data, but it fails in production. So what do you do? So what you can do is check data model differences. So ensure schema matches production. So uh, first of all, go and check whatever you are doing in the development, uh, sample data, whatever you used in that and the data which is present in the production in both if the schema is matching or not. Okay, sometimes even that also differs. So go and check first of all, schema is matching or not. Then check gateway issues, deployment settings, any permissions, refresh or anything is not working. That thing you have to check. But first of all, go and check the schemas. Okay, everything is correct or not in the production. Okay. Then let's go to similar questions. How do you troubleshoot a blank visual? So first of all, check filters, relationships and measure calculations. Okay, this is what you can do. You can go and check the filters, relationships and the measure calculations. And then what to do if a measure returns incorrect results. So use DAX Studio to debug step by step. Okay, that's what you can do. Whenever uh, if a measure returns incorrect results, just use the DAX Studio and uh, debug it step by step. Okay. I hope you already have used the DAX Studio. If you haven't, just go through it because if you are uh, like four to five years experienced or three to four years experienced, if you're three plus years, then it's good to uh, use these kind of tools because that will increase the performance. Okay. So uh, next question is, why does a report fail after publishing? So there might be different reasons, right? So first of all, check the data source credentials and see if there is any issue with the gateway or if there is any change in the schema, okay? then that might be the reason. Then how can you debug a slow DAX measure? So use performance analyzer and DAX studio again. Okay, same answer. So you make use of the uh, performance analyzer and also the DAX studio. Okay, then first check when a Power BI report throws an error. So what you'll check the, uh, what is the first thing you check when Power BI report throws an error? So first of all, look at the error message and then go and check the data source connections. Okay, so uh, make a note of these as well and research and prepare answers on your own. Okay, uh, whatever points I have told, just note down that and then format answers on your own words. Okay, then next pattern is pattern 5 SQL plus Power BI combination. So how do you improve performance when using direct query? So what you can do is um, in the optimized SQL queries, use indexes. Okay, avoid select star. Okay, if you use select star, all the uh, columns will get fetched or all the rows will get fetched. Don't do those kind of things. Okay, fetch only what you need. Okay, so that is what you, you are saying. Optimize SQL queries means uh, take only the rows and columns, whatever you need for the report, not entire data. Okay, and then use index views, pre-compute aggregations in SQL. Then reduce cross-filtering complexity, meaning uh, just avoid too many joins. Okay, because that will also uh, decrease the performance. So you have to reduce the uh, cross-filtering complexity, meaning you have to reduce uh, joins and also index views. So... Uh, you have to do all the aggregations in the SQL itself, not in the Power BI. Okay, maximum joins. Okay, maximum aggregations. Whatever you are doing, everything you have to do in the all the. I mean, I'm just saying all the transformations, all the joinings, all the joins, all the merging, all the fetching data, whatever transformation you want to do, maximum transformations do at the source side. What is the source? Your source might be SQL, or your source might be Excel, or your source might be CSV. So whatever it is, always. Try to do most of the things in the source itself instead of doing it in the Power BI. So that way you can improve the performance. 
and let's go to similar questions when to use import versus direct query so when you need better performance use import and if you need real time data use direct query then how does power bi handle large direct query uh, data sets so what we do is we use query folding and we can use catching mechanisms okay so what is query folding if you do not know please go and check out i have already explained in other videos as well so i'm not repeating just uh, learn what is query folding as well then best practices for partitioning sql tables so partition by date region or category to improve performance okay and how can materialist views help so materialist view what it will do is it will pre aggregate data for faster queries so that that's way that way it will help the performance okay then what if a sql query is too slow in power bi so you can use indexes and also avoid functions on uh, where clauses okay so if uh, sql query is slow just optimize the indexes and also check what data it is fetching okay then pattern 6 real world business scenarios so a business user says the report is incorrect but you're sure it is correct how do you handle it so first of all uh, if you if you know that it is correct but the business user is saying it is incorrect then even though you are sure still don't argue you investigate and ask for specific examples so why is he saying there might be some reason why he is saying it is wrong and it is okay that you know that it is uh, it, there is nothing wrong with your report it is everything is fine okay that that's okay that you know that but don't argue you have to ask for specific examples and check if data source matches expectations then what is the expectation or uh, whatever examples they are providing check it check compare and see if the data source matches the expectations okay then with example just show them uh, so this is what is expected and that's why it is showing and why uh, such values are coming that you can show with example instead of that don't argue just investigate what is happening ask them uh where it is showing incorrect and why they are saying it's incorrect okay then you will find then you will be able to find the answer that's the way to deal with this issue okay then similar questions how do you handle conflicting requirements from teams so prioritize based on business needs and just discuss which is important okay that's uh, that's the only thing you can do uh, discuss trade offs discuss uh, which is the highest priority and go according to that uh what if it's stakeholder request last minute changes so uh you have to check how much impact this change has and then you you can communicate what what issues you have and then if it is not possible just provide them alternatives okay how do you explain complex power bi features to non tech users so use simple language and uh, real world examples that is the only way then how do you balance performance versus detail reporting so use summary tables and also make use of drill through features that way you can explain complex power bi features to uh, so that way you can uh, uh, like if it is data is very complex then you can do detail reporting that way okay what to do when two data sources have conflicting numbers so then what you can do is check data refresh schedules and transformation logic okay that thing you can do uh these things uh these questions just note down again and uh, make make answers of your own okay uh, so next final lessons from 10 interviews so what i have learned is communication matters sometimes more than technical skills okay always ask clarifying questions before answering because sometimes uh, what you are asking that also matters that also counts in the interview okay and interviews want to see your thinking process sometimes they don't want exact answer they want to know how you are thinking how you are getting to the answer or if you are not getting to answer still how you are thinking okay that you can show them okay and recognizing patterns makes interviews easier so now i i have recognized six patterns so in the six patterns what i did i showed you main questions and then what i did similar questions which can be asked in the pattern which which were already asked in the previous interviews so this way i have identified six most common patterns and in the six uh, then i got six main questions and for each pattern i got extra five questions that way we, we got 30 plus 636 questions okay like that so you have to identify patterns whenever you are attending interviews note down and identify the patterns then you will easily be, uh, then you will be preparation will be easier okay and so if you found this video helpful make sure to like share and subscribe for more power bi interview tips and also comment below if you have faced any of these questions in interviews and uh, let me know which topics you are like me to cover next so see you in the next video thank you